Aloha, Rich Alverson here. This is ICS 211. And um, this today is July 5th, uh, first end of the first week of the of the summer session. Uh, so I'm just going to um, check in with you, catch up, catch up on some things. Let's see. I share my screen. This is the. Uh, uh, this is the. The home page for the uh, learning management system that we're using called Lamaku. Lamaku.hawaii.edu. And uh, uh, let's see. So today I'm going to. Um, uh, so let's see where we are. This is July 5th. So if we go to student view content and go to course overview, uh, we see this is a syllabus. And if we scroll down to July 5th, we are uh, covering you should be looking at chapter five right by now uh, you should have um, chapters one through four the due dates have passed of course that doesn't mean you can't do them in fact uh, the Zybooks Zybooks uh, activities are really not due until this day here or, or maybe the Saturday after that uh, that's not true for the pro for the the lab so we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> Okay, so um, so yeah, just to remind you of the 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 homework policy, everything is due by August tenth, and uh, you don't need to you don't need to ask me to hand in hand in uh, to complete homework after these posted due dates. You don't need to ask me. Um, just it's fine. Uh, these are for your pacing. You don't want to wait. You know, you don't want to have too many of them build up, and you'll see that. That I've pretty much evenly spaced them spaced them all out through the whole semester. There's a uh, about twenty chapters, and there's about thirty days, and you can see how that's divided up. Um. So, uh, just another reminder: the programming assignments. If you look, uh, let's see, programming assignments. Those would be listed here under assignments. This is a four credit class. And there are uh, so there are eight labs here. These are programs. They're you know not simple programs. They're you know simple enough. But uh, and uh, basically you just complete these. And all of these programs start in the textbook. If you go to chapter twenty, the lab programs. Uh, these are these are the programs. Uh, this is these are the start. This doing doing these. Uh, We'll start you with the program, and then there's some enhancement or one or two enhancements that you uh, add on to most of them, and then you um, you make a video. See, this is uh, rock paper scissors, for example, and here you you complete lab twenty dash two, and uh, and then you you enhance it by adding two more things that you can you know play. And uh, explains it here. And what you have to do is uh, demonstrate your program running in a short video. I say try to keep it around one minute long, but if you go two minutes or whatever longer. But the idea is that you keep it short enough and uh, the the person that's grading will, will pause and take a look at your code. So you, know, you're, you scan through your code and you, know, you display it on the screen and you can zip through it pretty fast. But if we want to take a look at it, we can... Always pause it and so on. All right, and then so, so follow these directions. The directions are, are pretty much the same for all the, the labs. Uh, so so the, I've I've also I posted the grades. If you go to the grades section, you should be able to see your grades up to for uh, the first seven chapters. Participation activities don't count towards your grades. Grade, so they are they are not included here, but uh, chap chapters one through twenty challenge activities and labs do count. Uh, these are this is mine, so it doesn't show anything here. But for your for yours, you should see numbers all the way up to chapter three by now for those and those. And then um, the labs down here will be graded manually, and those those scores will be entered when they're uh, great. <clears throat> All right. So, um, now, um, 
I do want to mention that that if you have trouble finding things on on Lamaku, you can go to La Lima. You can go to La Lima and um your uh um this course will be there. And if you click on the course, you'll notice the first uh it, it may pop over to this Lamaku um screen it may direct you to Lamaku because because we're trying to get people to use Lamaku but if it doesn't you can go back here this will this will you uh this Lam, uh La Lima page will, will always be here and this the same uh course overview is here and um the textbook access to the textbook and the lab assignments are here and the gradebook classic is here also um now um you you will notice down at the bottom that uh, uh as we complete the chapters that these scores will go up here uh these are these do not count they don't count towards your grade um if you're if you're you know doing very poorly and you know then then we may look at that and have it count for something uh to see that you did did some things but um otherwise you don't need to do them uh, because they won't count, but you can do them if if they help. The first seven chapters um, should be just reinforcing what you learned in the first semester programming class that you took. So um, it kind of does does two things. It reinforces these programming concepts, like uh, the concept of a variable and assignment statements, and uh, uh branches you know if if else statements and the different kinds of ways of branching switch statements in, in they're called in in uh in java and uh loops and and arrays and so on and so um there's there are certain concepts that are common in all programming languages and those are basically the ones that are marked optional you don't need to do the one it you you won't get any credit for doing any of the optional sections so that means you don't have to do them if you do them they aren't going to help your grade okay but they will help you do the parts that you do have to do and so if they're not marked optional then then you have to do them um all of the sections that are not optional in the first seven chapters should be really straightforward and you should be able just to go to them and do them and what you will learn is there there are the parts that are um that are specific to java the you know you know all programming languages have loops and branches and so on but um there's a bunch of stuff in each programming language that is different and those are the those are the things that i generally uh are marked not as optional like switch statements they're a little different in every programming language uh boolean is actually not but String comparisons are different in in every programming language. You'll see here that there are, there are these methods that go along. You know, just compare two strings. You use these methods, uh, and and um, you know these things. And so so those are not optional. Uh, you can can cover those string comparisons and 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 so by going through these challenge activities, it, you you either learn it for the first time if you're coming from a language other than Java. Some of you may be coming from Python, uh, and you'll see you'll see the the differences here. Um, uh, the character operations are a little bit different, uh, they, but in a lot of ways they're they're similar. Uh, they're the same. Um, uh, so so all of these things that are somewhat unique to the language are not optional. So, and if you're coming from Java, then you know this already. So this should be really easy for you. I think most of you are coming from Java. Um, I wanted to point out a big difference between Java and Python is uh, white space. And I did not, I made it optional, but perhaps I shouldn't have for some of you that are coming from Python. Uh, white space doesn't mean anything in Java. You can put all your statements on one line if you want to, but does matter in Java. Is you put a semicolon, a, a semicolon separates statements, or a semicolon um, terminates statements. That's 
that's what signals you that, that the statement is over. In Python, of course, it's a line feed. It's a character tree. So the one statement per line. So the, the statement fills up the line, and then you hit the return, and that's the end of the statement. Um, with um, with Python, you indicate blocks uh, by indentation. In Java, you enclose blocks in curly braces. So these, this would be one block, just as this out here is one block. Uh, now we see that that statements are indented. But in Java and in most languages, that's just to make things easier to read. That's just for the programmer. But you certainly don't have to indent the way the way they indent. And you know, people have different different uh, uh, customs and ways that they indent. Some people don't like putting the the beginning curly brace on the same line as the statement. Some people would like to have this down here and so on. Anyway, um, so that's what chapters uh, one through seven are. Uh, this this if you look here, it's programming basics. This here, this sums up input and output. This is the first, this, this statement here, this, this thing is prints. And um, this thing reads in a number, reads in a number and, and prints something out. And so this is, this is, you'll see this kind of, these lines in every Java program, there'll be a line that looks like this and a line that looks like this. And um, these are the the library modules, which are, you know, they have the, they have these in every language. Uh, this is how you import a module in Java. Um, in Java, all variables need to be declared before you use them. It's not, so not the case in Python. <clears throat> and uh, this is how you um, create an instance of a you know an object that's a that connects to the scanner that reads reads from the keyboard. This is how you read an integer from the keyboard. Uh, with this is how you print print something and print ln what will print and then put a line feed afterwards. <clears throat> In Python, if you just use a print, it puts a line feed afterwards. And if you don't want a line feed afterwards, you have to do something over here. Okay, so little differences like that. All right, so that's um, also in section one. Um, uh, it's it's a good idea to read this on figuring out what errors are. It's, sometimes it's kind of difficult to read error messages. And a lot of the times when people, when students ask me questions, they will screenshot and by the way, this is fine. Any question is a good question. They'll screenshot it and they'll send it to me and they'll say, my code doesn't work. And so I'll just look at the screenshot and I'll look at the error message and then I will interpret the error message for them and and and, uh, and reply explaining how, how you, <laughs> the clues that were given in the error message to help you uh, figure out what's the matter with your code. So anyway, that's, I, I thought this was good. This textbook included that section. And these these labs are, are very simple. They just get you acclimated to the um, to the way Zybooks does labs. This uh, we are um, using these uh, advanced labs, so it's a little bit different. You actually have a a, a console uh, and so on. So if you're used to the old Zybooks, you'll you remember it's a little different, and and there's still a lot of exercises that use the old. Okay, I, I I covered a little bit of chapter two already. Um, one thing about chapter two is uh, <clears throat> um, uh, you have to be more explicit when you're using different data types in the same expression, and so that explains that's explained right here. And you may have to use this casting. Let's see, that would be in two twelve type conversions. So this is if you're using um, integers or uh, if you have uh, integers and, and floating point numbers in the same expression. And the way it works in in Java is uh, a floating point number is declared as a double. If any, if there is at all a double 
operand in the expression than it does floating point math. If there are only integers in the expression, then it does integer math and it doesn't uh, you know, carry over the, the, um, the uh, fractions to the right of the decimal point. So that's the basically how it works. And if you want to do something differently, then you can you can prefix something with the word double if you want it to if you want to treat it like floating point. Here, for example, we want to figure out the average number of kids per family. And uh, uh, we want that to be a floating point number because you well, fractions are okay, it's an average. But all of these, all of these are integers. So if we were not to put a double, then it would just calculate out and come out to be three because it's the integer math. Turns out you don't have to put double on every one. You only have to put double on one. Okay, anyway. Uh, so here it's gonna come out as three, see, because these are all integers. This is gonna, uh, this is gonna compute to an integer number and then you store it in here. It's just gonna be the three that's stored in there. So anyway, um, that's uh, casting uh, branches. I talked a little bit about branches already. Uh, there's a there's a statement and there's a type of statement, a, a conditional statement in Java called, or is it? It's uh, cure. It looks like this, where uh, this this is a statement. The way it works is you have a condition here that's an expression that evaluates to true, true or false. Uh, and if this evaluates to true, you you uh, evaluate this expression and store the value here, right there. Or if the value is false, if this computes to false, then it evaluates this expression and stores it here. Okay, so that's the conditional expression that they, they don't, that's a, not all languages have that. Looks like this. And so, you know, you can go through this. Uh, if it's 50, if X is greater than 50, if X is greater than 50, then Y is equal to 50. See, if x is greater than 50, y is equal to 50. Otherwise, y is equal to x. So if this is true, 50 gets stored into y. If this is false, then x gets stored into y. So if we check that answer, we see that it's quite correct. All right. Uh, so, and then for um, chapter four. Oh, uh, floating point comparisons. You should never test if two double variables are equal because of floating point, you know, when you're converting from binary to decimal, you may have repeating fractions in, bi in one of them, but not the other. So you should always, uh, you know, s s do s uh, find the difference between the two uh, within some margin of error. So here it talks about uh, how that might be. Uh, here, here it explains why, uh, example of what can happen. And so um, they suggest you do something like uh, where there's a margin of error. Where is that? This is floating point comparison. See here. Uh, you you want to test to see if the body temperature, temperature is equal to 98.6. Well, in, instead of... Uh, just having if body temperature e equals, you know, double equal sign 98.6, what you do is you subtract the two, you, you, you get the absolute value of the two, uh, of, the, of the, the difference. And then if that, if that is less than a certain small, very small epsilon, then you would say that it's true. All right, but you can do greater than and less than, that's fine. All right, so chapter four, Four is on loops and uh, while loops are the same, uh, except for, you know, you don't in for like Python, you would indent them in the, just a block while the expression is true. 
Uh, there's there's another kind of wild, there's another kind of loop, which is not in every language. It's a do while, and basically it's repeat until, or you do it while this expression is true, the test is at the end. So you'll always do the loop body at least once. Yeah, it's different than a while loop. It's possible that you'd never do the body of the loop. Uh, if four loops are the same. Uh, they're, they're, four loops in other languages are actually more flexible. It can do more stuff. Uh, the only thing that's that's you know beyond just looping through one one at a time uh, incrementally you can the th the third expression here uh, you can make make the incremental the increment value higher or bigger than one and of course it can be be negative uh, you can have nested loops of course talks a little bit about that uh, oh there's um, you can you can break out of a loop or you can you can skip to the end of the loop or skip the rest of the skip the rest of a loop uh most languages have this they they use different keywords but anyway that's break and continue so here shows that uh enumerations there's enumerations which is which is pretty cool you can uh, uh you know call things by something other than a, than integers in name name states and then test to see if something is equal to a state assign assign a state to a variable of that type and so on it's enumerations um okay so uh the the lab 415 is the first lab that's 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 not just a dumb stupid lab to learn how the system works so um uh, so you can go through this. It's not a very difficult lab. I want to point out that I added this to go to content. And if you go down the table of contents, we have the textbook. And this is a link to the textbook, as usual. And then this is some resources. So there's what I do. The first one is a spreadsheet of videos for sections of the textbook from previous semesters. So you click here, and you have to log into. You have to uh, have logged into the uh, to your to Google on to, to you on UH. You know your UH Google account, and you can have access to this. And so, for example, uh, so these are sections where I lecture or go over. I cover these things in YouTube videos, okay? So from previous semesters. So for this one, there was this lab 415. I think it's the real estate summary, isn't it? Real estate summary. Yeah, real estate summary, okay? So go here and you click on this, U this link here. And I believe this is a video. I used to scrub up all my notes in the previous year in order to figure out where my leads come from to make good marketing decisions. So this is uh, okay. Uh, this is pretty simple to write. So this is the previous one. You know, you know, shows you how to do the code. Um, so, so that's there. That's pretty cool. And then um, here's the playlists. Playlists for twenty twenty summer twenty twenty three and summer twenty twenty two. I linked those here. And then here's here's a video I made. I I didn't put it on on uh, on uh, on YouTube, uh, but it shows you how you can just. Uh, there's a lot of challenge activities where you, you're supposed to execute the code in your head or whatever with a pencil and paper, and then you write down what's written. And of course, you can just open up a, a you know something that executes Java and paste the code in there and run it. So that just gives you that. There's a lot of challenge activities that aren't that way, but uh, this for those that are, if you want a shortcut and you want to get through this more quickly, get through the challenge. Some of the challenge activities more quickly, you can use that hint. All right. And uh, let me point out to you that if you go to La Lima, I, I might have pointed this out to you already, um, those, uh, the, the um, resources down here also have that spreadsheet, which is here. This is that video that, that Makes chat talks about challenge activities and then the two video playlists.
All right. So um, I hope that answers uh, some of your questions. Um, if you have, have have any more questions, just just email me. I'm I'm gonna um, make these videos more with with a greater frequency in the future. Um, it took a while for us to get get everything working in La Lima. I mean in Lamaku, and um, we we still haven't come up. Uh, so um, the as far as the the late policy goes, um, you for the for the programming assignments, the labs, um, try to get them in by the due dates. Uh, you know those get, have to be graded manually. Um, as long as you hand hand them in before the last week of class. Now this doesn't now for the last two assignments or do the last week of class, but for for the first five assignments, as long as you hand them in before the last week of class. We aren't going to um, discount any points. You want to hand them in on time because then when they're graded, if you did something wrong, you you get it back and you'll be able to correct it. And then, and then you want to hand it in uh, before the last week of class. And so the last week of class, we'll be grading all the old stuff without penalty. Uh, no, grading all the old stuff. If you hand it in after during the last week of class, uh, there'll be a There'll probably be some small penalty. I'm not sure if it's going to be points yet, but you might you might have to do a little more to get the same number of points. And then, um, and then of course, if you hand it in um, the weekend, uh, the, these are labs now. These are the lab assignments that have to be graded manually. Um, I'm I'm going to uh, let let our let uh, the TA be off duty after that. I'm going to be grading uh, the ones that come in really late at the end. I'll I'll be probably the one that's grading those, and so I might discount a little bit more for those too. So try not to let that happen. Anyway, so I uh, hope this helps. Uh, thanks for watching.